kill flows, Nintendo Switch. I'm on some shit that's monumental, magimental, artificial intelligence. Jotted down on scribes, the last of a dying breed. They wonder how I survive. Turban tide, turn the tide. Go. What's going on, everyone? This is your boy Ash, the man bringing in the noise. So we are here to talk about Microsoft buying up Activision. Yeah, you didn't heard it. Microsoft has made the big move in purchasing Activision for almost $7 billion. Yeah, they threw out the briefcase, the big monies. They didn't got the bank out. So this has been reported on January 19th. So just confirming a few things out here is that with them purchasing Activision, that means that as followed, Activision itself, Blizzard, and King are now under Xbox, which still it has to be finalized for July 2022. But titles like Overwatch, Diablo, Call of Duty, World of Warcraft, Candy Crush, and StarCraft and also Spyro, Crash Bandicoot, and many others will be under the Xbox brand. So, man, this is crazy. This is something that is roaring over the gaming community. So, I am here to talk about things that are good about it and things that are bad about it because it's a give or take kind of thing and it can benefit you and it can also make things worried depending on where you play or how you play. So let's talk about it. So let's get the good out the way. I think this will be good for Microsoft because it means more genre games means they'll have a more diverse library. This will add more titles for different genres, being that Microsoft can step out the usual shoot 'em and racing games. And I think that's big for the company. To me, I think it's oversaturated with mainly like shooters. And I know like Forza kind of like been doing real good. But to me, I think it could be a break away from that usual genres that they always push in. Another good thing is that it's building up pressure for the other platforms and gaming. Now, this mainly goes towards Sony because um, Microsoft is adding a lot of flagships to their stuff. So, it's really put the heat on Sony and seeing what they're doing, what more are they requiring, or at least what are some of their more exclusive titles that they are planned to release. So, in this section, Xbox kind of like rules the gaming subscription service in which Sony struggles to find its way or its foothold in that genre. Now it's the time for Sony to really buckle down, get their subscription service up to XL PlayStation Now and make something that could compete with the Game Pass. Because Game Pass is really going to take off with this deal is really going to be a real bargaining chip even more than ever but them having 25 million subscribers um for their subscription services sony really has to do something this really upset ups the ante for their position now here are some takeaways from this now exclusive games being on only Xbox and PC. Now, if you witnessed last year, you know, Phil Spencer did make some comments being that one, he wants, you know, exclusives to be on platform. So he's not really looking towards the whole exclusive games being on just one platform. But it's it's kind of like he pretty much kind of told us a tale because now Microsoft has two big game companies that they didn't purchase within a year. So it's kind of making you scratch your head. I was like, okay, Phil Spencer, you really took us on a ride here. But um, with that being said, um, what we've seen when it comes to the exclusive with, um, with um, what's the company? Um, Beseda, they are really buckling down with their exclusive, especially when it comes to new titles, especially when it came to Starfield. Starfield did not come to PlayStation, in which that was a newer title, but it just wasn't exclusive for them to bring it on all platforms just for Xbox and PC. Now, going on to another subject, it may be too much for Microsoft to handle. Again, when they miss some of the games that they have, they are really games that fans can get behind. And with them downsizing a few of their studios in the past, it makes it seem like, okay, you know, these games, you know, sounds real good to have on a Microsoft, 
but where they have the time to really start pushing all of these titles for it or it could be to where they may just sell some of these ips to kind of focus on the ones that's the real money maker like for instance overwatch is you know is one of those games that are highly played that they got esports on is it really is a revenue game so guess what I don't think that will be something they'll sell, but however, there are other titles they may even consider to sell. So, moving on to the next one, um, the Game Pass may just go up. Now, that's something that I really find scary and something that I really think would happen. Like, when it comes to the Game Pass, Game Pass offers a lot of games for you just being subscribed to them, and you could literally knock out some games without actually having to break the bank but with them acquiring activision and Bethesda, they are literally going to increase this price i don't see them keeping it at the price it is so with that being said you guys just may want to stack up on your year subscription of the game pass just to ensure that price will be good for you so that's just my recommendation but outside of that, again, this is something that's big for the gaming world. I mean, I'm excited about it because it definitely brings up the competition. It makes it, you know, that Microsoft is making their foothold that they ain't going nowhere. And that's great. You know, the last thing we'll want is another game of company or, or at least a platforming game of company to shut the doors on anything they do gaming. You know, we want to cherish the things that we love to do. And that's number one is game. So, hey, but that's enough of me talking about this let me know what you guys think in the comments below and what you guys think about microsoft acquiring activision other than that your boy ashton man is out peace